So in this video, we'll be looking at physics examination uh, questions. So this is must be 2017 paper. Figure B1.1 shows part of a venial calipers. So we've got a venial calipers there, we've got the main scale and the venial scale. Question 1 says, what is the reading of the venial calipers? Now, before you go any further, when it comes to calculating of the reading of the venial calipers, you need to know the reading of the main scale and the reading of the venial scale, then you add. Now, when you look at the venial, the main scale there, the venial scale, if this is 8, if this is 8 and this is 9, this must be 8.5. Alright, so if that is 8.5, so we are saying, each line in here, this the small line, we are saying it 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 uh, represents zero point one. Therefore, when you look at where the venial scale was starting from, starting at zero there, and we we take the readings be where the venial scale starts. So the venial scale is somewhere there. So we can say this leading is on this line which is there. So that must be seven point nine centimeters that's our reading on the main scale then the reading on the venous scale you go to a line that coincides with the line on the main scale which is this part here you can see that the, the top line and the bottom line there they are coinciding and when you look at that from 0 to 10 you've got 10 there when you look at that line is on 5 so that is 5.0 millimeters now you need to multiply this times times 0 0.01 centimeters and so saying 5 times 0 0.01 centimeters we are going to have 0 0.05 centimeters then you add plus 7.9 0 centimeters which is going to give you 7.95 centimeters as the reading on the venial calipers. B says write in word the SI units of the following physical quantities and state their symbol. So what is the SI unit in words for velocity? So we are saying velocity in words we are saying it is meters Per second so meters per second so this is one now in symbols you are saying it just meters per second then two temperature temperature is Kelvin and the symbol is K Acceleration, it is meters per second squared, which is in words, sorry, in symbols, it is meters per second squared. So that's what you are required to do there. Chen 2 says, what is the difference between density and relative density? You know that density is the mass per unit volume. Wow. Relative density, I will say RD, is the ratio of the density. of a substance to the density of pure water. So the relative density has got a lot of definitions. I've just picked that one to differentiate it from, from um, the actual density. So mass per unit volume, that's what we call density. But relative density is a ratio 
between the, uh, the density of a substance compared to the density of pure water. Shembisi's figure B2.1 shows a cuboid container that has a 5 cm square base and contains water to a height of 6 cm. What is the volume of the water? For, for the fact that this is a square base, square, and it has got uh, a base of these centimeters and a height of six centimeters. What is the volume? We know that this is a, a cuboid and the volume is a cuboid given by L times B times H. So in this case, we have, our height is six centimeters, but what is our length and our breadth? Because it has got a square base, the length is equal to the breadth or the width, then multiply by 6 centimeters. To give you 25 centimeters squared times 6 centimeters, so 25 times 6, that will give you 150 cubic centimeters as the volume of water. Two says a stone is immersed into the into the water in the cuboid, causing the water to rise to a height of eight centimeters. Determine the volume of the stone. To determine the volume of the stone, you need to find the difference in height. Once you find the difference in height, that can also give you the the, the volume of the stone. So I use two ways to solve this. First step. First way, I'm going to find the difference in height. So we are saying this is 8 minus 6, going to give us 2 centimeters. Hence, the volume will be length times breadth times height, which will be 5 centimeters times 5 times 2, to give me 50 cubic centimeters. That is procedure number 1, which I can use to find the volume of a stone. Procedure number 2, I can say volume the new volume is L times B times height, which is 5 times 5 times 8, which is going to give me 200 cubic centimeters. But the, my first volume, remember, it was 150 cubic centimeters. So when I find the difference between these two volumes, I'm going to get 50 cubic centimeters. So it's the same concept. You can use either two or the method, then it's going to give you the same answer. If the mass of the stone is 80 grams, calculate the density of the stone. Density is equal to mass over volume. Mass has been given to be 80 grams, and we know the volume that it is 50 cubic centimeters. And when you divide there 80 divided by 50, we're going to have 1.6 grams per cubic centimeters and that marks the end of the question question b3.1 shows a lamp being used to lift a box of weighing 480 newton three a distance on three meters and a height of one meter by applying a force f of 200 newton so you can see a diagram there state the meaning of the term simple machine now what is a simple machine a simple machine is a device a device that makes work easier by applying a small effort, a small force or effort. There's no difference because effort is also in terms of uh, force is a force, so it's a device with uh, which, which is going to do work, but you are going to apply a very small effort for it to do work. That's why you know that a simple machine. Then B says, calculate the mechanical advantage of the lamp. Now we know that mechanical advantage is equal to load over effort. Our load in this case is 480 newtons. And our effort is 200 newtons. So our mechanical advantage is, is 2.4. It has got no units. It's, it is a ratio. 
so it has got no units. Calculate the efficiency of the lamp. We know that efficiency is equal to mechanical advantage over the rest ratio times 100%. 100. Now, we've got, we have our mechanical advantage in MA is equal to 2.4. But we don't have our velocity ratio, which we don't have. It's missing. First, let's find velocity ratio. Velocity ratio. Therefore, velocity ratio is equal to distance moved by the effort over distance moved by the load. Now, what is the distance moved by the effort? The distance moved by the effort is the one which is around here. And the distance moved by the road is the one which is vertical. So distance moved by the effort we are saying is, is 3 meters. And the distance moved by the road is 1 meter. Therefore, velocity ratio is going to give us 3. It's also a ratio which has got no unit. Therefore, efficiency is equal to 2.4 over 3 times 100 that's going to give us 80 percent so thank you so much for watching on previously tutorial i'll see you in the next video don't forget to subscribe